Hey everybody, it's Tim McCamus again out here in the shop, continuing on with our composite series. We went through a lot of different stages here of uh, construction of composites to some of the on-track repairs. Now we're going to do a little uh, maintenance video on some of the items that need to be tended to on the car. So one of the things that, that you have on all these cars is uh, quarter turn fasteners, uh, whether they're holding the deck lid on or whether they're holding the front end on. A lot of times they can be self-ejecting so they can have a base uh, riveted on with a spring in it so they self eject when you turn when you do the quarter turn sometimes they're just a, a loose stud but they still will have a plate either square circular diamond shape some type of a plate on the body itself so that the head of the quarter turn fastener doesn't dig into the paint so either way you have a riveted plate on the composite part itself now we use a solid rivet we use a what we call like a buck rivet which is a is a soft solid rivet that that we push in through an eighth inch hole and then we'll buck that rivet on the back side which will produce a head on both sides even though that's a very good system these composite front especially the carbon front end so the fiberglass ones are have a little bit more thickness to them but the carbon front ends are very thin and a lot of times you're going through a core material when you're putting on the quarter turn fastener. So you might be going through a couple layers of carbon, then a core, and then another layer of carbon, which is gonna be, in all, it's gonna be maybe 125,000 thick, but uh, that core is usually soft, uh, so it's a light material, and it can be made of a lot of different things. But uh, bucking a ribbon in that doesn't always produce the best hold over time, because you've got these fasteners are on and off all the time and you're pushing in on them with a with a driver and turning them and and sometimes the you don't have them lined up quite right and you're forcing them in they get a lot of abuse so the the back side and i've already put tape on the other side so the back side of the hole is going to look something like this i'll just show you the front side so without the fastener in it um, you're going to look something like this you're going to have a large circular hole and then you'll have a, a stamped plate and these rivet holes will be right here. Well, what happens is over time, one or one of these will come loose first. So one of them will work their way loose, and then inevitably the other one will come loose. Pretty soon the the fastener is uh, is loose in the hole, and you're and you're trying to put the front end back on with that thing flopping around in the hole. Sometimes it's from damage. It can be like a burst panel explosion. You can pop a burst panel. You can have a nitrous explosion. A lot of times those will st stretch the front end out or, or the percussion from underneath will blow the front end out and destroy these fasteners. So what we're talking about today is just repairing the small little eighth inch holes that uh, that we need to refasten the rivet through. So once that fastener has come loose, if the base of it is still in good shape, you can drill out the rivet and just reuse it, or you can put a new one in. By that time, it's probably need to replace the fastener anyway. So let's say we're gonna put a new one in, but this hole now is all chewed out or it's larger than it needs to be. So in advance of this, I went in and sanded this area on the back here around where I'm gonna do this repair. And while I did that, I dug out the center of this eighth inch hole. So I had a, a hole straight through there, but I, I dug it out so I have some area to put some fill material back into because just putting a patch over this on the back side doesn't give you anything to um, bite back into. So what we need to do is fill this um, hole with some material and then cap it with a little small filler, okay? So <clears throat> I've done a couple things here. Uh, just using some fiberglass, um, mat which comes in our kits or if you have some in your shop just some stranded some one and a half ounce three quarter ounce fiberglass mat you can take and make a little bit of a chopped mat okay and i've chopped some of this up in here and what it is it's it's this material here that i've taken scissors and cut in a bunch of directions just to make some chopped stranded mat so it's just real fine little pieces of chopped mat okay and if i put some out here on the table you can see it's just a bunch of hodgepodge pieces of fiberglass. So I'm gonna mix up some resin. I'm gonna follow the directions. I'm gonna mix it up um, to the right ratio with the catalyst and the resin. I'm gonna take my brush, and then I wanna fill in this, put some resin in and fill up this hole. Then I'm gonna take my brush over here and just dab it down on this stranded chopped mat and just sit there and pack it into this hole. 
So it, once you get it wet, it'll be easier to work with and you'll just take your, your brush and pack it down in there, get as much of that fiber in there, even if you have to take a little pick or a little round punch and push it down into that hole and get as much of that fiber, pack that hole full of fiber because you're going to be drilling right back through that same hole. You don't have the option of turning this uh, to a different location. So we're going to pack that hole full of this chopped mat and resin and then to top that <clears throat> we're going to take a little square patch of this, put right on top of that and then after that's wetted out we're going to take another one and put on top of that. Now that I've got that done and wet it out, I'm going to take a little piece of that peel ply, put it on top of that, take a dry brush or even just take the brush you have and just take it on some cardboard and get rid of that excess resin and then use that damp brush, it'll just be damp with resin, to tap this and, and kind of pack this peel ply down so that it'll help hold that material flat and then just let it cure. And if you're doing this in, in between races, you'll have time, just walk away and let it cure and the next day you come in, peel this peel ply off, this hole will now be full of that fiber and you can actually take a little hand sandpaper, take some, uh, some 120 or some 80 grit and just rough this off and smooth this out. If your front end is painted on the inside, just take some of the, of the black paint, which is probably like a satin black or something, and dust it back on here to do this repair. Now, once that's done, I can peel this tape off of this side and my hole that was damaged before will now be full. This tape is going to be flush here, so that hole is going to be full of that resin and then those fiberglass um, mat uh, that I chopped up and pushed down in there. That's all going to be full, so I got some strength in, in that area to drill through. So now what I'm going to do is use my new fastener to put back on top of there, line it with this hole, and you may want to do both holes at the same time, but if you've got a good hole here that's not um, oversized, go ahead and reuse it and then drill back through this hole here and then buck that uh, rivet back in there. Pop rivets will work too. I don't really like them. They don't hold up good in this material, um, but a good solid rivet with the proper tools to buck that closed will, will work best because you get a nice tight compression from that. So uh, once you do that, your repair is good and you're back in business again. Quick little tip, easy to repair, no problems to do, takes 15 minutes total to do this repair and it's well worth it once you get that um, back in the right place and get it fastened back onto the front end. So that's my tip for tonight. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next episode.